Hey guys, today I am going to quickly show you how to go about making GIFs in Photoshop. Um, first, you're going to need a new document. Um, it doesn't really matter what size you make it, you can make it whatever size you normally draw at. I uh, usually draw somewhere in the like four to 5,000 pixel range, but ultimately for an animated GIF, it's going to be shrunk down kind of smaller. So. You only need to make your file size really big if you plan on also saving out frames for like prints and stuff, but it doesn't matter. We'll worry about some saving stuff later. Um, first things first, you need to find your timeline. If you go to Window, Timelines at the bottom, make sure it's checked. Um, I have mine at the bottom. If you've never opened it before, it's probably going to be over here, but you can drag it and put it anywhere you'd like you are going to want to click create frame animation. Um, and there's also a timeline feature which will act more like After Effects or Premiere. I don't normally use this to animate in Photoshop. So today we're just going to go over the frame by frame animations. Um, so using this tool down here, there's to add a frame you click on this little piece of paper, add as many as you want. To delete them, you can select what you want to delete and click on the trash can, or just drag and drop them over it. To change the timing of these frames, you can click on this little drop down here. I would not recommend ever doing no delay, sometimes that can run funny on different websites. I if you want something fast, you can do point one. For flicker gifts and stuff like that, you point two is my default, really. And if you're timing stuff to music, you can do other and sort of punch in your own. I've find like point two is usually pretty good. Uh, point three three sometimes syncs with a lot of stuff. Um, one point three. Um, that's just sort of trial and error. For now, we'll leave it at point two, though. So each of these frames um, will switch which layers are showing or hiding in your layers panel. So let's just go to the first frame here and make a new layer. And we'll just animate a, uh, a ball bouncing, I guess, or something. So, we have a layer with a ball, and that's our first frame, and you can click the next frame, and uh, there's a lot. <laughs> I would just make another frame, and like draw where you want like the ball to like smash or something, and then make another frame, make a new layer. like draw out there I guess um, then you can click around and kind of add some frames in between ultimately you want each of these pictures on um, their own layers because turning off and on these layers is how you're going to animate this all right so we've got a bunch of circles that are questionably good <laughs> And, but every single frame, every single one showing. So, you need to turn some of them off. On the first frame, you turn off all the other ones. And then click your second frame. Turn on what you want. Click your third frame, and turn on what you want. Fourth frame, and turn on what you want. And your fifth frame, and turn on what you want. And then when you hit play, it's going to cycle through them. Um, down here, you can tell it to loop forever. And since it's a bouncing ball, we're going to make it a little faster. I'm going to go ahead and put it to point one. So, yeah, that's pretty much at its base form how you make a GIF in Photoshop. Uh, things to watch out for is if you're on this first frame here, anything you turn off and on will happen to 
all the frames. So if I accidentally am on the first layer and I turn on frame number five, um, and then turn off frame number five, because I'm like, oh, I didn't want that. Well, if you turn on frame number five, frame number five is going to be on every single one, or four, or whatever. And if you turn it off, it's going to turn it off on every single one. So basically, anything you do to this first frame happens to the entire document, which can be both helpful and frustrating, it depends. Uh, if you accidentally turn something on and off, you are going to have to go back to the frame and later and return it back on, because if you turn it off on the first frame, it will turn off on its frame too. Um, this can be helpful if you're like, you know, adding a signature or something over top of everything and you just quickly make a new frame and write like, you know, your name. And then it's going to be there on all the frames. Um, you can select, like let's say I didn't want Ellen Tori to be there on these frames though. You can select multiple frames and turn things off and on. And if you wanted to undo that and get it back on all of them, you could go to the first frame again and turn it off and on. Um, the more you work with GIFs, the more you'll sort of get a feel for, I don't know, navigating this. <laughs> um, yeah, you can make things in groups too. Um, if you, let's say we wanted to color the balls or whatever, you can have like groups turn off by frames which would probably be an easier way to go about doing it, actually, if you're going to get really crazy. Um, so each of these frames is now in a group, and you can see here we can actually turn on all the frames, but hide the groups. So first frame is first group showing, second frame is second group showing, third frame is the third group, fourth frame is the fourth group, and the fifth group. And this is helpful because if you add new layers in those groups to like, let's say I want to make the ball red, um, normally if this was outside of a group, um, oh never mind, I lied. Oh, because that's showing. Yeah, you still have to make sure your groups are hidden. You gotta make sure the groups are hidden, too. <laughs> anyway, um, what this is doing, though, is you can go into these groups that are showing, make new layers, and color away. And um, you aren't going to have to go through and manually unhide or hide these things. Because if you make a layer and it's outside of a group that's already been s assigned to either show or hide on a frame. If it's just its own free layer floating around in the world, it doesn't matter where you make it, if you make it and you draw something, it's going to be on every single frame because it's, it's not in a group that's been told to show or hide itself. It's just doing its own little thing out here. So, I mean, if you wanted it to be on every frame, that's great, but um, if you have groups, it's a nice way to... See, we put it into group 3, which is only set to show on frame 3, so now it disappears. This is good if you are actively working through things, and you know, like, you want to make, you know, your frames and stuff, and then you can add layers like crazy do whatever you want and you don't need to worry about going through and uh, fixing everything. And yeah, um, to make oh, like the wiggle text gifts, which I do a lot of, where your things like um, We'll make another file. Sometimes I make GIFs where the stars twinkle or the text wobbles, and I almost always do that at point two. And 
It's pretty simple actually. You just write out whatever you want. Or whatever stars you want. That's your first frame. Then make a new layer. And you can actually lower the opacity um, of that frame and it will not change on your first one. And that's sort of your guide. Make a new layer on top of that. And all you're going to do is trace it. Try to get it as close as you can, otherwise it will look kind of crazy. Stars, you kind of want to balance which ones uh, shrink versus which ones get bigger. Um, it'll look cool if some are shrinking down and others are... I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> anyway, and then you hide the one you lowered the opacity of. And then you go back to your first frame and, of course, turn off that second frame because you don't want it showing on the first frame. But since you turned it off on the first frame, that means you also turned it off on the second frame. So you got to go back to your second frame and return it back on. <laughs> but there it is. And then you hit play. And there you go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Um, the star is going a little crazy. But that's easy enough to fix. You can go through, tweak whatever you want. And that's pretty much it, actually. It's pretty straightforward. Um, for saving, let's go ahead and export this out. I'm gonna get rid of these weird lines. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to turn that on in this frame. Alright, so you've made your fantastic GIF of whatever this is, and you are ready to export it. Oh, I should also point out, your frames don't all have to be the same speed, like, you can just select specific frames and um, change them, so it could be different. It could be whatever you want. Anyway, um, so I would save a version of this. I would always keep like a high resolution file somewhere. I'm not going to save this, but you just save it as a normal PSD file. Um, if you're getting ready to save it out as a GIF though, I would go to your image size, drop it down to 72 dpi or whatever. Um, 720 pixels wide is not too bad actually for a GIF. Just go with whatever. You can view at 100% to see what actual size it is, and that's pretty big. Um, then you're going to go to File and not Save As. You're actually going to go to Export and hit Save for Web. And you can preview what you've done. You can make sure your looping options are set to forever or whatever you want. Um, up here is where you can change your preferences. In general, like 256 at full dither is pretty much as like nice as it can get. Uh, if you need to drop your file size, you can definitely experiment with first dropping your dither. That uh, takes a lot out of the memory or the space. Uh, you can also drop colors. You can see down here in the bottom right, it's going to give you a file size. Currently this is just uh, 22 kilobytes. That's not very big at all, actually. Um, this should run fine on everything. Uh, in my experience with Tumblr, I don't know Tumblr's actual rules for GIFs. I just know I have a hard time getting anything over, I think it's 2 megabytes. Anything over 2 megabytes just flat out won't play on Tumblr. So 
if you've got something really, really crazy going on, you're going to need to drop your image size down to maybe just 500 pixels wide. Um, you can drop your colors, you can drop your dither. Um, you just kind of have to keep dropping it and test it on Tumblr. You can upload it into your drafts and save it in your drafts and see if it'll play. And if it plays, you're fine. If it doesn't play, that means your file's still too big and you're going to have to drop it down. Um, but yeah, so if you're happy, you can also click uh, different versions up so you can, can compare how different ones look. Once you've got what you want, you just hit save, and it goes to wherever you tell it. Uh, if it's a GIF file name, you cannot have spaces in it. Don't save it with spaces. It has to have like dashes, or just be all one word. So keep that in mind while naming. Uh, we'll call this ball bounce, I guess. And that's it. You should have a GIF file that's ready to go. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, and I will do my best. Uh, yeah, happy giving.